very good morning to all of you good morning so i welcome each and every one of you for our second day uh, online webinar entitled shifting values and the new innovation in urban farming during covid 19 pandemic so today is our second day of this program on this uh, day so uh, mr ragul sharma founder gohati micro greens oakland punjabari area gohati he is a founder of that um, gohati micro greens and he will be delivering the talk on micro greens the food a uh, nutritious super food so before um, beginning our program i would like to read his uh, uh, bar data so ragul sharma founder gohati micro greens oakland punjabari area gohati is an urban farmer and founder of gohati micro greens a passionate traveler entrepreneur and writer promoting northeast of india yes graduation done on a bcom commerce and then is a marketing and manager and blocker at the rate te manja i think he is a young entrepreneur and uh, people who are want to start uh, you know new entrepreneurship you can get to the new idea the success stories and he will be speaking on uh, this uh, particularly this uh, micro greens and uh, all the participant uh, i would like to request everyone so uh, pay more attention and his uh, uh, success stories how he, he would begin that one and what are the uh, you know things require and uh, if you have any doubt you can uh, interact with him at the end and you can even type it in the chat box also and on this occasion now i request uh, our organizing secretary um, Uh, now uh, she will be uh, um, delivering this uh, welcome address and welcoming our participant now i hand over the time to dr victoria devi uh, madam victoria devi she is organizing secretary of this program she will formally welcome the speaker and the other uh, participants a very good morning to one and all the day is the second day and also the last day of our two days webinar on shifting values and new innovations in urban farming during covid-19 pandemic the reasons what behind organizing this webinar is that we all know that since the coming of this covid-19 pandemic everybody is aware, aware about how to take care of our health but there is no uh, any kind of super food that will suddenly increase our immunity or our our total well-being so uh, from yesterday we have been hearing about uh, many kinds of new entrepreneur who has been uh, growing very nutritious kind of food which is very much good for the total well being of the people so uh, instead of uh, the uh, uh, instead of depending totally on the market uh, we can uh, grow such kind of nutritious food even at our home at a small level, a small scale see yesterday is the speaker uh, who had done on hydroponic he had started in the year 2019 at a very small scale and now he is he has extend expanded to a level that uh, he has he is giving he is earning uh, he is not only supporting the family but also earning a good income likewise today uh, i have come across rahul uh, personally in facebook and i was uh, very much uh, attracted like how he uh, how he is uh, growing microgreens and how he uh serve the people in guwahati by supplying such kind of food uh in during the pandemic so let us all know what is microgreen from him and how we can start such kind of uh gardening at home and and then uh, my message is that now uh, only the people who knows how to grow will be surviving so we all uh, let's learn from him and rahul i am very happy that you have accepted our invitation and then uh, you you can start your presentation you can share your screen now 
I will do it right away. Uh, and thank you so very much for giving this uh, opportunity. Um, and I'll definitely share my experience, all whatever little that I have achieved so far. I'll be more than happy to share it with my friends who are here at the moment. All right, I just wanted to uh, know if it's visible to everyone, uh, Victoria. Yeah, I'm yeah, your, you uh, your screen is visible. Rahul, your screen is visible. All right. All you right. can start. Wonderful. Okay. okay. You, can, you can press that uh, slide view. So, all right. Uh, uh, so, this uh, webinar training is about introduction. So, I'm going to um, I'm going to talk about my experiences rather than, you know, how I started it and how I, what my process of growing microgreens rather than, you know, I telling you about 10 different type of processes that you may also watch it and, and you know, read it on internet. So, uh, so my name is Rahul Sharma. I'm the founder of uh, Guwahati Microgreens. I'm here to introduce you to the world of microgreen and how you can, you know, take it forward as a business, you being an agripreneur, if over sometime in the near future, if you wish to start your microgreen business, then how you may can give it a start. You know, that's my agenda for this whole meeting. Um, I'm 34 years old. I am a BCom graduate from Bangalore University from 2004, 2007 batch. I currently live in Guwahati. Um, prior to agripreneurship, which is just a year old experience for myself, I've been always associated with marketing and online sales for about uh, more than a decade now. So um, my, primarily my business is at the moment is about travel and tourism in Northeast and the Indian Himalayas. I'm a part of an adventure travel company called Kite Manja, where I look after the online marketing and sales and also um, the, the, the community section of the company where I write blogs, I interact with fellow bloggers or, 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 or other hoteliers and so forth, so on and so forth. Um, as I already mentioned, current job position, I am the founder of Guwahati Microgreens and marketing manager and travel writer at Kaik Mandra. My hobbies are traveling. I also love riding motorcycles. Uh, cooking is my passion and I love playing music whenever I get time. Uh, can you, uh, uh, Rahul, excuse me, uh, can sure. you press that uh, slide view so it will be full screen, it will be available? Slide so. Okay, uh, there are many my uh, icons. You press there. Press slide that so. slide so. I can't find it. Can you please help me out with it? Okay. Uh, can you see that the first file? File, home, insert, design. Transition, animation, and then slide show. One, two, up. three, four, five, six, seven to one. On the up. up. One, two, three, four, five. On the I head. see new okay. share the, and pause share. Uh, no, no, Rahul, no. you see on the uh, top, top of your PowerPoint. File is there. Home is there. Insert. Insert. Design. Ah, oh, all right. Hold on, hold on, please. On yes, on slide so. Oh, oh yeah, 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 I'm so sorry. Yes. I mean, this thing is very. Yes, yes. Oh, now it is okay, correct. Okay, now yeah. it is okay. Yeah. Uh, your slide it's visible, I believe. Yeah. I'm so sorry for the inconvenience cause. It's visible, oh, right? No it's issue, full no issue. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Uh -huh. So yeah, coming back to about about. Guwahati Microgreens, uh, uh, Guwahati Microgreens is not old now, so on 27th of August 2021, I'll be completing an anniversary, so we started, I started this last year, in, around this month only, um, I mean, I started growing microgreens from the month of May and June, but then commercially, I started from 27th of August 2020, um, Guwahati Microgreen is a vertical indoor farm, it's a very small uh, vertical indoor farm at the moment, but I'm 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 planning to scale it up, looking at the demand uh, that I have been getting from the amazing people of Bharti. Uh, I cultivate different type of microgreens and wheatgrass. I mean, there is only one wheatgrass, but then different type of microgreens for sure. Uh, 
Uh, the product type is my, it's fresh, nutritious, and perishable uh, because microgreens are, uh, are teeny tiny plants that we need to consume. We will talk about it uh, in the next slides. Uh, my target market is uh, both uh, the direct customers, which is uh, in, uh, in business terms that we call as business to consumer. And I also deal with hotels and um, departmental stores and other uh, enterprises that deals with food or wellness or 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 anything else, you know, which which is which is defined as a business. To 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 give a short description about Guwahati microgreen, this is one common line which I always use. Um, um, Guwahati microgreen is an indoor farm growing and promoting fresh microgreens for individuals and businesses in Guwahati. Uh, I'll go to the next slide. Okay, this is something that you can definitely get it anywhere, everywhere about the definition of microgreen. So I'll not talk about what is written on internet. I'll, if I had to talk about my experience and what I felt out of growing microgreens and what microgreen actually is. So for me, it is a it is a teeny tiny edible plant which that we harvest at the seedling stage. Um, when it is about about three three inches tall at the max, and um, and microgreens are a superfood. You know they are power packed with antioxidants, vitamins, minerals, uh, and dietary fibers. Generally, what happens like if someone is going to gym, if anyone amongst you uh, are very pro, they are, is a health conscious, and then you always hit the gym, then I'm sure your health instructor must have told you to add some fibers into your into your V whey protein or whatever to increase your fiber content in your body, right? But the microgreen is something which is which is packed with, not only with the nutrients and minerals, but it is also packed with mm, dietary fibers. Uh, it is a health food, as I've already told you, and it contains, as per the research done by the USDA, which is the United States Department of Agriculture in 2014, uh, the peer researchers have found that uh, it contains 10 to 40 times more nutrition than the mature counterpart. And when I say mature counterpart, like as per our diet, in our diet, if, uh, um, about 80 to 90 percent of the vegetables that we include in our day-to-day -day diet, be it uh, be it uh, um, be it uh, a radish or mustard green or or beet or cucumber or carrot or uh, or spinach, you know can be grown as a microgreen. There are just one family of uh, plant uh, which cannot be grown as a micro, uh, microgreen. And in that family comes tomatoes and potatoes and eggplants and all that, which cannot be grown as microgreen because at the seeding stage, they have a toxic content. I'll go to the next slide now. So these are the types of microgreen and as per their family, you know, we have Brassica, Astera, Epice, uh, and all these, and it includes all different varieties of microgreens that can be grown. I mean, this is a very small number. Uh, the, the, the number goes on and on. There is no end to it. As I said, like about 80 to 90 percent of the my, uh, vegetables and green leafy vegetables that we consume in our Life can be grown as microgreens and, and it can be eaten, you know, for your good health. Uh, so this is something important, uh, the benefits of microgreens, why you need to grow microgreens or why you need to consume microgreens. As I already told you, friends, microgreen contains 10 to 40 times more nutrition. Uh, so it is packed with uh, essential vitamins, minerals and dietary fibers. Um, it has essential antioxidant, antibacterial, anti-inflammatory, and antifungal properties, uh, which which uh, which fix the nutritional gap and also keep us healthy. Um, um, it has a couple of the microgreens like broccoli, chickpea, flax have also also have anti-cancer properties. Um, it also reduces the chances of heart disease. Uh, few uh, again, bro uh, few microgreens like broccoli or uh, or kale and bok choy is quite effective to fight a pre-diabetic and type two diabetes. Uh, it also improves eyesight and skin care. And uh, as I started uh, um, earlier, it is one best thing to have dietary fibers into in our diet. You know, this if you introduce microgreens to your diet, you are also introducing 
with the required dietary fiber in your body. So uses of microgreen. So a microgreen is generally used in three categories, uh, food, health, and cosmetics. Uh, so cosmetic is something which is very new, uh, but primarily in food and health. Um, the food industry, uh, it is loved and used mostly by the chefs and the foodies um, and also by the bloggers because it not only increased the uh, health value of the, uh, the health value of your food, but it also increased the aesthetic value of your uh, uh, of your dish, you know. Um, and by the health industry, because it already contains so much of, uh, you know, fat nutrition and, um, and uh, minerals and everything. So, so it is uh, usually used both as a raw and as a dehydrated powdered natural food supplement. Nowadays, I'm sure in internet or, or in, even in Google, you see a lot of, uh, you know, Ayurvedic supplements and other supplements which which says like this is chemical free and have a lot of different uh, 100 times or 50 times more nutritional uh, uh, properties than um, than than the actual medicine my friends these are nothing but microgreens which are powdered and um, you know uh, capsule to be sold in the market uh, this another new field uh, of for uh, the microgreen and it is it's in a very early stage is industry because of the, because of the high nutritional value uh, uh, so there are a few uh, natural skincare companies uh, which are using microgreens uh, to make a cleansing oil and exfoliants for a better skin uh, for a better skin So next is growing of microgreens. So I, uh, for me, the I have six different stages of growing microgreen, and it's pretty much same for everyone else. So uh, the process starts with the selection of seeds, uh, preparation of soil, uh, sowing of seeds, the blackout phase, entering the lights, and finally the harvest. So this is this is the most important thing that you need to know. Uh, you know, because uh, uh, everything starts from here. You know, so I started following this process about a year ago, and I've been doing it daily now. And thanks to it, uh, there are a lot of people who also started following me on this and started growing themselves at home. And they also purchased from me at times. But I honestly want everyone to follow this practice because growing microgreens is so easy. That, uh, that, you know, and it doesn't need any space. You know, you can do it in your bedroom. You can grow it in your kitchen. You can grow it almost everywhere. It, you, it, it can be grown indoors and outdoors as well. So let's, let's dig deeper into the process of growing microgreens. And I'm sure you will definitely like the idea behind it. All right. So um, all these points are defined properly in my next slides. So let's go ahead with it. So the first is selection of seeds, you know. Um, so collect seeds is something which is very important, you know, and getting the right seeds is, is something very, very important. And we need to be very careful about it because now that we consume microgreens at a very seedling stage, I mean, when it is three, uh, one to two to three inches tall, so we need to ensure that our seeds are not chemically treated, you know, and these are like uh, local seeds or non-genetically modified seeds. Um, and uh, if possible, because it's a very traditional and old practice, whenever, even in the, even in the large scale farming sectors, we always tend to see that, you know, we always sun dry the seeds for a few, for a few hours or, or, or a day before sowing it, you know, so that it, it kills the any problems or whatsoever. So the same for process needs to be followed uh, for microgreen seeds as well. Next comes the soil preparation. You know, uh, 
But uh, in our case, uh, we actually don't need to use the word soil because uh, we are not using soil here, at least for in Guwahati microgreens. Though microgreens can be grown using both soil and substrate, but I personally, I love growing microgreens uh, on a substrate uh, because it has, uh, because I know from where I'm getting my substrate and I know if they are not chemically treated or they do not have any chemical content. But if I had to buy, uh, because I live in a city, and uh, microgreen is a very urban concept, you know, and uh, unlike the villages where you know the soil is fertile, uh, we cannot ensure it and we don't know if that's the case in, in big cities. So um, I am actually scared to buy, uh, you know, soil from outside to grow my microgreen, which I tell people is super healthy and super food. If there will be some kind of problem coming out of uh, it, then it's, it's, it's going to bring a bad repute to the business. So I use substrate and substrate is definitely better when it comes to microgreen because it, it, it can retain moisture and water for a long time compared to, compared to the, um, uh, compared to earth or soil, whatever you say. Um, and um, only thing that we need to do is, so this is the mantra, you know, to, to, to grow good microgreens in a, uh, in a substrate is to keep, your, uh, to keep your substrate moist, but not soggy. So the idea is uh, when you use a, when you start growing microgreen, you can use a tray, you can use a bowl, and in the picture, you may see I'm using an Erica palm bowl. So this is how I generally grow uh, because I don't like the concept of using single use plastic to grow something so healthy. Uh, so I grow in such, uh, such bowls. So what I do is like I take the loose cocoa peat, I add some water, uh, I make it little, a little uh, so moist. You know, and when you squeeze it, like if you take it in your hand and if you squeeze it, you know, ensure that water is not dripping out of it. No, it is quite moist that, you know, you feel the moistness in your hand. But if you press it hard, uh, make sure that water doesn't come out of it. If, if, if in case water is dripping from your feast, then, then, then you need to dry it up to, uh, to, to a level where you can only feel the moistness of the cocoa peat, but no water is coming out of it. I hope I, ma I made myself clear on this. Um, even, uh, even a half inch or a one inch of substrate is good to grow microgreens and, and, and it is grown amazingly. In the, later, in the later slides, you'll get to see it as well. So now comes the sowing of seeds, you know? Unlike, unlike the traditional method, I mean, look at this picture and see the way I have uh, used uh, the seeds in the bowl. You know, it should be sown very densely uh, because, uh, because microgreen, because they have every, that we harvest in a very seedling stage. So even if you keep it in such uh, short distances or like even if you keep it so densely, it's not going to impact the growth of the plants, you know, because uh, a tour after the first uh, pair of the matured leaves grows up, that's when we harvest it. So like this, you can definitely grow your microgreens. But ensure that you are not creating any lumps, you know, if there is a, a seed one upon another, then over the time, there are higher chances that uh, your uh, growing medium or your uh, growing bowl or tray or whatever will get affected and uh, there will be uh, there will be molds or fungus some kind of fungus on top of it you know so after once you sow the seed like this then it is very easy you can use your hands or you can probably use a small cup to sprinkle or maybe if you are if you are using small seeds like you know for instance mustard bok choy uh, or or broccoli and all so you can actually use uh, all those uh, you know table salt um, you know all this sprayer kind of a thing right that we use in our kitchen you know you can fill 
fill the fill the box uh, fill the container fill the bottle with uh, the seeds and you can sprinkle on top of the bowl that is the most easiest way uh, for the beginners and later over the time when you you know when you get habituated to it uh, you can probably use a bowl or maybe uh, you will get to know how effectively you can use it by, with your hands also so yeah uh, don't make a lump lump seeds may get affected and and once you are done sowing your seeds you know you need to cover it again with a thin layer of cocoa peat so that you know whenever you mist it twice daily they it retains the moisture and 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 the and the seeds starts germinating at a faster rate after after you finish the sowing of seeds comes the blackout phase uh i'm sure you can see uh, the way i have stacked my microgreens you know there are about three uh, bowls on top of stacked upon each another so the stacking is very important the stacking the stacking ensures that you know your uh, seeds are getting proper grip and it is getting better rooted you know it is beneficial for optimal growth and germination and you need to keep it in a cool and a dark place so that you know it doesn't get light and and the seeds they start looking for the sunlight or eat any kind of light and then they tend to germinate or grow faster uh, we need to keep it in the dark until it's half inch tall at this time you will see uh, the leaves are yellow because they are not still exposed to the light and to the process of photosynthesis so this this part is very important and you you will and 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 when you start as a beginner you know we always have this curiosity i had this curiosity for myself as well every day going out opening the bowl and to see how 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 much it has grown but then trust me uh, for first day you can do it but from the next day you can avoid it opening it every 6 hours or 7 hours let it rest the whole day sec so next day when you need to water it open it that time only see if there are any problems if if it's getting affected by molds or anything if not then you can keep it like this you know and 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 within third day and fourth day you will see the same kind of results that is right now visible on the screen so this this tray this stack of tray is four day old and here you can see purple radish bok choy and pink radish so i'm sure you guys are clear about the blackout phase i mean you can always note down your questions and doubts i'll be more than happy to answer it after i finish this slide i'm sure you may have some questions by now okay now after the blackout phase uh, and once uh, once the microgreens are half installed now it is the time to show them lights you know and when you stack it you know this is also one process that you can see in so uh, it is always easy uh, to 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 remove the you know the 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 cover of the uh, seed you know if you stack and put bait on it so this is the process actually so now once we introduce it to the lights we are starting the process of photosynthesis ensure that you have better lights and uh, good aeration when i talk when i say light you can also keep the trays or your uh, or your growing bowl in in natural sunlight also i because i am growing it indoors so i use artificial help but it also works better in it also uh, works well in in natural light also what can be better than sun isn't it so so yeah it it works in both natural and artificial conditions but ensure that it is getting well well aeration you know aeration is something which is very important ideal condition to grow microgreen is always about 22 to 23 degrees celsius uh, but if you can control the environment then you can take the you can grow it well till 13 degree celsius without any problem uh, but anything beyond that you will have to be very very careful you know you will have to monitor your 
uh, your crops. Uh, you will have to monitor your crops very uh, with a very close eye. I mean to say, you know, you'll have to be very vigilant. Um, if 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 the temperature rise beyond thirty or anything which is between thirty one to thirty five. At such cases, you may find a lot of, uh, you know, uh, mold problems or fungal problems because you are misting it, you're watering it, and then, you know, and if it doesn't get um, proper air, and, and if there is humidity or heat uh, surrounding it, then, then it will definitely get rotten, you know, it will get rotten. Uh, for a control environment system, uh, if if you are in a place where uh, the temperature rise beyond 30, 31, then you can install uh, small fans in on your growing rack, or you know you can put it right up in front of a fan. A table fan also does the job. Or if you are growing it in in large scale, then you can you may consider using an AC. You know. So that it, it helps you to control uh, the required temperature and the required climatic condition. All right. So once you show them lights for about six to seven days, comes I'm so sorry. Uh, comes the time to harvest, and how do we know that it's ready to be harvested? So microgreens is. As I already told you at the initial stage, it is a it is a teeny tiny edible greens that we harvest at a seedling stage. Um, what you can see in the picture is the two cotyledon leaves, which is which is clearly visible. But we call a plant as microgreen when we see the 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 first shoot of mm, the first shoot of matured leaves coming out between the first pair of quarterly dawn leaves. So that's when we harvest it, you know. So clip it, clip your, I mean, cut your microgreens at a certain distance, which is not touching the substrate or the soil. Uh, it is always better to harvest it right before you, 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 have, you have to eat it. So that's what generally we use. We ensure that our microgreens reach to our clients, um, within five hours of harvesting, if we but now generally we are selling live bowls, we 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 let them have the advantages of having live food because live food have more health values compared to the kind of harvested veggies that we generally get in the market. So so. To talk about the harvest of microgreens, um, see if the matured leaves are popping up from uh, in, in between the cotyledon, then it is ready to be harvested. Ensure that you know um, you cut it at a distance which is not touching the soil, so that you know you avoid any kind of dirt or whatsoever, uh, which you may get it from because now we eat it raw so we need to be careful that it, we are not cutting it right from the edge of the sun to avoid any kind of germs or dirt or whatsoever and and um, if you for instance if you cut the whole tray or the whole bowl by yourself and it is too much to for you to finish it in day one then what you can do is like you can use an airtight container and, and put it in a fridge, it should remain crunch and fresh for next three to four days. But it is all, always advised to cut as much as you need, you know, because that's how, that's, that's the best way of using microgreens. You know, it is so fresh, the flavor is so intense that uh, there's no point cutting it beforehand a day or two prior than, than the day you're gonna have it for real. And it is best eaten raw. So these are the six uh, stages of microgreens. You know how how do we need to grow? How how can we grow it? What are the process? Starting from selection of seeds, of using of your um, how to use your cocoa peat or the substrate, and then the sowing of seeds, the blackout phase. Then comes the light and the harvest. You know. Uh, 
feel free to ask any questions by once I'm done with the presentation. If you have any doubts, and I'm asking, I'm telling you this again and again because. Uh, all right, so uh, this is my. Uh, up, up, so on the left, what you can see is my zero vestus packaging that I generally use for my microgreens. Uh, this I have started about six months ago. Before that, I was trying to look for, um, uh, I was looking for alternate for plastic. Uh, initially, when I started growing microgreens and when I was delivering microgreens, I was generally using, uh, you know, banana leaves. And then I was wrapping it, uh, I was wrapping my greens uh, using a banana leaf but i realized that it doesn't show what exactly is inside and people will never know so it's actually creating a problem uh, to 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 promote my fares so and and at the same time i'm an urgent believer of say no to plastic i definitely don't like the idea of people using plastic in almost everything I mean, you, it's always better to use plastic if it, if it can be renewed or can be recycled in some or the other way, or, or if not, then there's no point. I see no point in using plastic, but it's my thought, it's my idea. I'm not trying to uh, you know, influence you by any ways, uh, but on the left, what you can see is my zero waste packaging. So it is, this is how in the market, and, and on the right, you can see uh, uh, one of my shell of one of my growing wrecks. So it has beetroot. The red one is the beetroot microgreen. The thorny uh, phosphor is uh, wheatgrass. The purple one that you see is purple radish. Um, there is pink radish and bok choy and uh, mustard as well. So these are a couple of the varieties that I generally grow for individuals and businesses in Guwahati. So uh, let me sh quickly show you uh, the different varieties of microgreens that I'm growing till now. But in the next coming months, I'm looking forward to introduce a few more varieties. But uh, to start with my existing product line, I've got Sango Purple Radish. So this is a very uh, pungent, spicy, flavorful radish, and it is purple in color, and it is loved by the chefs and the foodies because it enhances the food uh, or, or the dishes. Yeah? This is green peas. Um, it is also, I mean, green pea if, is also used uh, in, uh, in Manipur, uh, uh, for uh, for their uh, local food like Sinju and all. And so I would say that microgreen is not something very new to the people of Northeast. We are using such kind of, uh, uh, I mean, food sources that we harvest at the seedling stage from a long back. Be it, uh, I think it's called as Hawaii Maton in Manipur, I mean, in my Thai language. And, uh, and uh, we also uh, have we also, apart from um, green peas, we also have a baby uh, spinach that we consume as our daily diet and all, all these baby green uh, leafy vegetables. So in a way, uh, microgreens or is, is a part of our diet from quite a while now, and especially uh, the green peas. This is red amber. It's a very earthy flavor. Uh, it goes amazing with salads, and it and 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 it has a high nutritional value as well. This is garden crest, um, bok choy, radish. Now you can probably see how densely I have sown my seeds and the way it has grown, right? So this is how it should be. This is turnip. Uh, turnip for, uh, as per me, is one of the best microgreens if you love topping it up with anything that you bake for yourself. 
or you boil for yourself. It's it's one of one of my favorite micro breeds, personally. This is beet again. You see the, the thickness of so this one. This is this was for a charity during uh, during the COVID days. I uh, I associated with a local food vendor from Guwahati to supply my fresh and nutritious microgreens for the COVID patients for for whom we were delivering free food at the time during the second wave of the COVID. These are the moonbeams, wheat grass. Wheat grass is not considered as a microgreen. Wheat grass is always remain independent and it is a very great uh, health product. And it is a kind of superfood that if you can add it into your diet, will let you stay fit forever. And I'm not kidding. Uh, it, um, it, it is very, very effective. Uh, and especially if you, are, if you are health conscious and if you hit the gym daily, then I suggest you to grow microgreens and have a shot of it every morning uh, during, at the breakfast hours. And, and, and you will see a, a kind of, you know, a promptness and the kind of energy uh, in your which unlikely the case if you don't use it. But uh, again, it works differently in bodies. Uh, so, but before taking my, uh, microgreens or wheatgrass, it's always better to consult with your dietitian and nutrition if you are taking for some of the, some kind of health issues. But then if you are just keep having it for as a food or as a nutritional supplement, then there's no problem. But then, if you are taking microgreens or wheatgrass for some dietary issues, then uh, the list of microgreens that you need to consume must come from your nutritionist. All right, so these were a couple of products that I grow as microgreens. So, uh, what are the tips to start? How you can you know start microgreen farming as a business? You know, uh, so to, to, to the tips to start your microgreen business is to first learn how to grow microgreens because what I have seen in past one year that uh, people has, have started copying uh, me or other growers and then they are trying to grow almost everything. And they are trying to use uh, they are trying to use seeds which are not meant to be grown as microgreens. You know, this is dangerous. You need to know the right practices and the right art of growing microgreens in different weather conditions. Uh, I would strongly suggest to start growing microgreens as a business only if you are in an urban area, uh, because. Uh, it is an expensive product, and uh, you know, and in and in uh, and in rural setup, uh, the kind of diet and the kind of lifestyle that we lead, um, we I don't think that um, we actually need microgreens for such uh, for such environment because uh, my in big cities we have a lot of lifestyle issues. And, and uh, lifestyle issues uh, brings a lot of, uh, you know, it, it invites a lot of lifestyle diseases, you know, depression or, 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 or diabetes or heart, cardiovascular problems and, and so on and so forth, just because of malnutrition or you are not having proper sleep, proper food and all these times. And, and microgreen is something which can fix that nutritional gap in your body. But as I said, like it always, it, it should be uh, for, at least at this point of time, what I have observed is like a microgreen as a business venture best fits the urban area. Do a proper market research. It is very much important. You need to know 
who all are there in your market you know what are your low hanging fruits whom do you need to go and target you know if 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 a cafe a would love my product or if cafe b would definitely use it in their food uh, and and try to make a database of the kind of um, health conscious people or the foodies or the chefs uh, or the influencers that you have come across that you know or help uh, in the near future to expand your business you know But definitely you will have to distribute samples uh, beforehand to know if it if it will be well accepted by the public and uh, pay attention to the packaging because packaging makes your product look very enticing if you have a good packaging people will definitely uh, give a look at it and if you and if your packaging has the power of you know attracting people then trust me you are sold you know so these are the initial tips to start your microgreen business and these these are completely based upon my experiences uh, so you may add something more into it uh, from your own experiences as well all right so what are the opportunities that lies behind growing microgreens as as a as a agripreneur you know um, so the basic uh, i mean microgreens can be grown in a very small area so you don't need a large field to grow microgreens like in the, in a 10 by 10 uh, room you can probably grow about more than 30 kg of microgreens uh, in every uh, 14 to 15 days so uh, you and and if i tell you that the minimum uh, price of a kg of microgreen is 1200 rupees so imagine uh, what revenue we are talking about just from a 10 by 10 room and that too you are harvesting twice monthly you know you get the harvest in two weeks so you can harvest it twice a month uh so you need a very small amount of investment and as i said like in such a small space where you invest a little money and you are getting a good roi uh, return on investment so it is definitely a very very uh, good uh, business model if you can you know if you are doing it at the right place and at the right time you know uh, the crop cycle is short uh, i've already told you this uh, yeah if you are growing microgreens in a controlled environment or as i already told you in earlier slides if you are using an ac or or or, or set of fans that can control the humidity and the environment the the, the inside temperatures of the your growing rack or room then um, microgreens can be grown uh, around the year even the off season plants can be grown uh, at any point of the year at any time of the year uh, microgreens are are uh, are a local food uh, now that you will be growing it uh, at your own uh, campus or maybe inside your own house or maybe in your own setup so people will know from where the food is coming from you know because nowadays Uh, people are very much concerned about the food and food safety and security they need to know from where the food is coming from because there is so much of uh, chemicals fertilizers and pesticides that are used so it's always better to know from where your food is coming from and if it's secure or not and now that we don't add any to grow microgreens just the ju just the water that we use to grow microgreens so people will will be confident about you know they are having a chemical free superfood that is grown locally uh microgreens have a good market rate good price compared to the mature counterparts because they are 10 to 40 times more healthier uh, than than the full grown veggies and uh, they are also grown without using any chemicals so that's why they are a little expensive than the mature plants um 
definitely it has the potential to generate employment for un i mean educated unemployed urban youth so if i had to give my example though i'm educated i'm a bcom grad but uh, but there was this time during the lockdown where my primary business that is travel and tourism was was almost zero because we have been suffering from some or the other kind of problems since the uh, by from the end of january to december 2019 because the education started and then um, and then followed by covid and some or the other problems in the nearby states so there was absolutely no business uh, when from my primary source of income and a year ago uh, i started growing micro greens for myself and for my family and then i had absolutely nothing to do at home because my primary business was shut you know completely in turmoil because of all the political geopolitical or whatsoever you know all the natural natural uh, issues uh, so that's when i started growing microgreens commercially and it had helped me to 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 grow and to ensure good health of for the people of my city and it also gave me a a platform you know where people know me me being a microgreen grower or at least i've been able to you know pay my bills and support my family to an extent even if i'm not earning something very big so these are the opportunities that lies in front of you if you are planning to start microgreens in an urban area what are the potential challenges that you may face you know uh, that i am facing right now as well <clears throat> so the challenges is there is a big scope of awareness and trust me not everyone knows about microgreens though i have been though i have been growing microgreens for about a year i have a good number of monthly subscribers who subs who, who for whom i grow every week and i deliver uh, at their doorstep and i also sell my product to different hotels restaurants and 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 departmental stores but still there is a big scope of awareness so Uh, we should constantly brainstorm about how how uh, we or you need to spread an awareness and awareness can be done through a lot of different mediums you can use online channels you can use offline channels you can knock door to door and then you can you know you can share samples but then sharing samples for long term would not be a profitable venture but then yeah i i am very much active on instagram i am very much active on internet so that helps me a lot uh, maybe you can also use the same field and if you can use some other platforms as well um uh, only our imagination is the limit you know you can actually use anything and everything to spread an awareness uh another bottleneck for for growing microgreen is the insufficient knowledge uh about the iot agriculture iot agriculture is internet of things you know there nowadays there are so many the technology the, the the technology in agriculture is so advanced in the western countries and in fact in some part of india also but not everyone are well accustomed with it you know there is um, there are so many things that can be done with a drone or with sensors Or, or and then you just think of it and everything is actually there uh, uh, when it comes to technologically uh, for agriculture so but we don't know or not many people know about uh, the kind of um, the kind of uh, technical uh, softwares or um, or hardwares which are now available for agriculture and even i feel the government also don't talk much about it and even if they do they have their own close circle on which we generally don't get to know you know generally what happens is like mm, i being uh, coming from a non technical background not i will i would say non technical because i haven't studied agriculture before so i'm not used to reading articles or following websites or institutes that talk about you know all the help being 
um, given to or all the subsidies been given to the farmers and so and so forth uh, but as like for a layman it is very difficult to know what what help or what support is given by the government or the respective agricultural department so what i feel is a better platform like a big board notice board kind of a thing should be there on internet to know more about the privileges that an, an agripreneur, a first grade, first generation agripreneur may uh, may uh, enjoy over the time. Uh, microgreens are priced on a higher side because of its health values, because the way it is grown and, and the kind of seeds that are used because microgreen seeds are expensive. You know, it needs a lot of technical knowledge also to grow microgreen. And if not technical knowledge, at least uh, if you are doing growing it commercially, indoors or outdoors, you will need a couple of equipments uh, without which it is impossible to grow. So for all these reasons, it is priced on a higher side, which is one of the challenges that generally I face because when, and, and people have this tendency of, you know, comparing, uh, they, they don't, they don't care if it's a health food or if it's a super food or whatsoever. Uh, when they always compare it with whatever they are buying from the market. You can't compare a microgreen, uh, a, a microgreen spinach microgreen with a full grown spinach, right? These are different in shape and size and texture and also with the values. I mean, the health value, nutritional value and so on and so forth. So uh, microgreen is priced on a higher side. So you, you will have to make your client understand why it is priced on a higher side. And that is something very important. Uh, and it, is, it has a very niche market, you know, because it is a very new thing for the Northeast. Uh, in the mainland, in Bombay, Chennai, uh, Delhi, Bangalore, Pune, it's been going around from about about four to five years now and people understand the benefits of microgreens in such places but in in in, in northeast of india it's just a year old because uh to my knowledge i think i'm the first one who started growing this commercially i'm sure there were a lot many people who were doing it uh for their own or for their family and friends but i haven't come across anyone who was doing it commercially so it is something which is very niche so you need to enter the right market and you need to, you need to generate uh, awareness and, and ensure that your voice is reaching out to the kind of people whom, who will love your product and who will love buying your product. You know, these are the challenges. You need to brainstorm a lot about what, what will fit your marketing or what will fit your and how you can expand your business, what all technology that you can use to improvise your product quality and uh, how you can play with the market price or if you are having any competitor in the market, um, how, how you will give, how, will, how you will fit in the competition, what benefits that you can give uh, compared to your competitor and so on and so forth and, and the niche market definitely. So four challenges in nutshell. And um, of course, of my rack, one of my first rack, which I built myself, you can see the angular bars, you know, I got the angular bars from the wholesale market. I fixed it myself. I helped, I took a help of two of my engineer brothers uh, who, 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 who have set up these lights and chips and all that through which I get to know the temperature, humidity, and all that thing of, of the growing wrecks. And, 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 and the materials that all you need is the growing rack like this. You can buy a ready-made growing rack and, and fit UV or LED lights in, in this case for this, because it was an application stage and I was just trying my best. So, uh, this this has uh, LED lights. Uh, on the left side, it is not visible, but there are fans attached to it. All these desktop fans are attached to each and every rack. You also need a spray bottle if you are manually watering it from the top. Or over the time, you may think of a drip system or, or a water tank. 
which will be connected uh, with uh, with with a software uh, which is basically an IoT in agriculture again. You know, you you using technically advanced softwares to let uh, the monitors know if 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 the plant need water and all that. Um, which is also I'm not using at the moment, so I'm not in a position to talk more about it. Uh, sensors, yes, I'm I'm using a couple of sensors to to know about the room temperature and the humidity of the rack so that I can use my fans on time. And, and, and you need soil or substrate. I love growing my pro products in a substrate. I use loose cocoa peat and it works wonders for me. You can already see it in the picture. And most important thing, you know, without which you cannot grow microgreen and that is seeds. And I'm telling you again, my dear friends, seed is something which is very, very important. And you need to be very choosy when you select your seeds. Ensure that you are buying seeds from the right vendors. Try to avoid local vendors who are using uh, fungicides like Kaptan and Thiram in there uh, to, 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 to keep the seeds uh, for, for a long time without having any mold issues or fungal issues. We don't need such kind of seeds to grow microgreen. We don't need any chemically treated seeds. So be very careful when you select your seeds and definitely buy seeds from us. I mean, uh, buy a trustworthy vendor rather than trying different vendors because they are giving you uh, a deal, you know? That shouldn't be the way. So yeah, pretty much these are the seven things that you will need uh, to grow and to start uh, growing microgreens uh, uh, in a commercial way. Okay, so what are your potential marketing places? You know, who, who will buy your product? Who you should go and target? Who you should go and meet? So the first line, and that's the, the most primary business place that you need to hit ASAP if you're trying to if you are growing microgreen is fine dining hotels and cafes because chefs, they love microgreens because of their uh, color, texture, taste, and all that. Health clubs and hospitals, you know, you may reach out to um, fitness centers and health conscious people and also the nutritionists and dietitians in different hospitals. Uh, departmental stores, you know, because if there are big departmental departmental stores who are selling exotic vegetables and stuff like that, then this is the place you need to be, you know, to, to sell your product because uh, because until or unless you don't make it available in the market, people will never in, will get to know about your product. Health conscious people, I have already mentioned this. Home chefs and the foodies. The home chefs are those who love cooking food for themselves and their, for their family. And sometimes they also sell it to the people near to them, you know, in a close circle. They are not like chefs or, or a commercial restaurant, but they do a pop-up kind of a thing. Like I doing a Sunday pop-up for my friends and family where I price my uh, product. Say I'm making some kind of healthy salad. I priced it, say, for 100, 150 rupees. And then I... I let my friends and family know that I'm throwing this pop-up on Sunday where I am where I will be making salads, using microgreens and all that. So these are the home chefs, you know, who mostly cook it for themselves. And, and very often they, I mean, at times they also sell uh, their, their cooked food to people, not commercially, but, but for fun. And finally, uh, to the people who are suffering from any lifestyle diseases, you know, if, if someone is suffering from diabetes or, uh, or, or uh, any cardiovascular issues or malnutrition or, or, or Alzheimer's, there are kind of microgreens that they can use to supplement their health, you know. I'm not saying that they, they should avoid taking medicines and start adding microgreens, but uh, microgreens are definitely a very healthy natural supplements that 
shows wonder in human bodies when it is consumed uh, properly and as advised by the dietitians and nutritionists if you are taking it for some uh, for some health issues so the next slide talks about me and my farm being featured in the news uh, thanks to the almighty it's not even a year but then with the love of the people and uh, and 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 uh, and all these news channels who who you know who love the idea of i doing something unique in the in the city for the betterment of the health and hygiene of the people uh, there are a couple of news agencies uh, radio channels um, who featured me uh, in their respective platforms so i was featured in the sunday edition of the sentinel last year in in the month of november then a uh, famous aj from uh, radio mirchi guwahati uh, have hosted me to talk about microgreens and its benefits i was also featured on east mojo which is a news channel which is a very prominent news channel uh, online news channel coming out of northeast and um, one and this and this particular and this particular article about me was trending on google you know people from all across the world got to know about me growing microgreens in guwahati because it was trending on google for the keywords like guwahati farming in guwahati and so forth so it was trending all across google for 3 days and thanks to that there are a lot many people there are a lot many news agencies there are a lot many hoteliers who got to know that microgreen is now available in guwahati and and not only the locals the assamese diaspora across the world they got to know about someone is growing such things in the city and trust me there are so many people who who dropped a uh, uh, warm wishes congratulations and piece of advice on my linkedin on my instagram as well and i felt so blessed a uh, couple of others as well i have been trying to i'm i'm trying my best to raise awareness about the microgreens and their health benefits so uh, inside any have featured me very recently my favorite rj rj mandy is is also help me to promote awareness about it uh, so so we had a one discussion about on a phone about uh, microgreens for good health and uh, tnt the northeast times recently featured uh, microgreens and its health benefits on their online portal as well i was also featured on the official humans of assam as a microgreen farmer the one of my last one of my last uh, um, article about uh, microgreen recent article of not last the recent article about microgreen was in the assam tribune where they talked about five important things of microgreens or the five benefits of microgreens uh well this is pretty much about what and where my business was featured on coming I mean, going to the next slide is about the google reviews i have received so far uh by god's grace there are about 45 i mean uh, 40 right now at present i think there is about 45 uh, reviews and they are all five stars people have loved it and 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 these kind of reviews always help me to you know introduce new varieties or grow better for them i have doctors uh, i have doctors health conscious people hoteliers uh, as my clients and they have been showering their love since day one of my business uh so this is something important i think this is the this is the most important part of the whole uh, whole conversation that we are having right now uh, apart from growing microgreen is why agriculture urban agriculture is important you know uh if you look at the wikipedia definition it is very lame it is very simple saying that 
it is a practice of cultivating processing and distributing food in and around urban areas but then what why i feel everyone must you know we was this is the time that we need to think about agriculture urban farming or urban agriculture is because of only because of you know nutritional i mean food security and safety we actually don't know from where our food is coming from i staying in guwahati at least i know from where my food is coming from and trust me the places from where the food comes i mean over there there are there are a lot many pesticides or fertilizers or chemicals that are used in fact the hormones or or or, or i don't know the, the growth enhancers and added colors you know which which makes which makes our food a slow poison so so just to curb that problem urban farming is something which is a need of an art and it is the future of it is the future of food you know it is the future of farming because our nation is expanding every day you know now we have 130 million population imagine what's going to happen after 10 years or 20 years where we have where we have limited uh, fertile land for who now if if from one field if we are taking care of food of say about 100 people there will be a time that the same field will have to look for 200 or 300 people and it will lose its fertility right and then we will be using n number of other chemicals and you know you you guys know it very well because you come from that field uh, you are you are studying that part of the that part of the industry you know that part of the world uh, uh, so i don't need to tell you how dangerous the situation will be in the next coming years if we don't start uh, doing ag- urban agriculture we need to be Uh, and ag- when i talk about urban agriculture urban agriculture is not only you know growing uh, uh, growing uh, plants you can also rear animals you know you can have cattle such a place you can have pigs you can have anything you know you just don't need to be dependent upon you no know, wholly dependent upon the outside sources and it is it is something which is very therapeutic also you know growing your own food having it it makes you healthier so end of the day uh, you are doing it for yourself and and for your good health so i think urban agriculture is very much important for the coming year and for our own future uh i think i have pretty much covered uh, the why we need uh, urban agriculture in my previous slide only uh, it ensures food security it apart from food security you also uh, become secure economically you know if you are an urban farmer if you are growing food for people uh, in an urban setup so uh, you are generating employment for yourself and probably for others also where you are earning money you know you get a self esteem for yourself unlike in big cities where educated youth are still unemployed and you know they are depressed about about their life and what is happening with themselves rather than you know thinking deeper about going and trying to get into a 9 to 5 job it's always better to start your own farm to start growing your own food and 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 to help people you know and if you have but it is only possible if you have any thought about it. no you can't just go to someone and tell he start growing food and you know that that thing should come from inside so, so yeah so to cutting in a short economic security and income generation uh, is one benefit of urban agriculture it makes you self sustained it it becomes it brings a social change you know now people start accepting you as a micro green grower or as a agripreneur who is doing something for the people or for his family or for his own living if not anything else you know you are turning barren land or unused land or a unused space in a green space so people love seeing this and and people try to imitate you also you know once you start growing something uh your neighbors or your friends and your family gets highly influenced and then they follow the same practice 
so you are actually bringing a good habit into people into people's uh, life so uh, it brings a social change in people um urban agriculture also have uh, extreme environmental benefits uh, because it reduce the cost of food production it reduce the green gases the greenhouse gases uh, that we emit because of because of all the transportation on that we do uh, from from transporting product from place a to b and uh, it also like if you start growing urban farming or you feel start doing uh, if you start growing urban uh, at an urban uh, place then you are also introducing your plants to lot of pollinators you know such as bird bat bees butterflies that helps to multiply the greenery around you you know because they are these 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 insects and uh, birds they are the one which helps to pollinize things and then to then to uh, to make our environment better and greener so these are a couple of benefits of urban agriculture uh, personal and both for the society as well and uh, based upon my experiences like you know these are the few things that you need to become a successful agripreneur or, and if you choose urban agripreneur as career you know so you need to be self dependent you know uh, you need to know what you are doing uh, it needs 100% attention so you will have to you know it's not like you started something and then you are feeling lazy okay now that i know i i can do it sometime later no i'm sorry it doesn't work like this you know you'll have to win your toes you'll have to follow your dreams and you'll have to do it every day you know you'll it is challenging uh, because it, it it takes lot of sacrifice it asks for lot of sacrifice at times you may not get time to you know go for probably for family functions or may you may have to i uh, have to um you may not get time to do something for yourself also but uh, but the the reward that you get for all these sacrifices is what makes you happy at the end of the day you know um as i already mentioned it gives you a position in the society uh, people start following you and give you uh, a platform or give you a position uh, in the society mm, uh, you earn a better money because you are removing the mediators from the market now that you are growing in an urban setup you are growing in 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 right in front of the people so you don't need any brokers you know earlier or or transporter you can deal everything by yourself because it is a very hyper local concept of growing microgreens so you can grow it yourself you can deliver it yourself you know you can get the feedback you can market you can sell you can do everything by yourself and this is what i'm doing right now so you are cutting the transport charges i am cutting the minimum charges and 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 it helps me to earn better mm in the future when you become an experienced microgreen grower then it also opens uh, an avenue to you know start doing lot other things related to the same field you know you can perhaps become a consultant so now probably uh, you may give consultation or you may give your advices to people who want to start growing microgreens commercially or you may also try or you may also you know teach them online to grow microgreens for which you can also charge them you know you can also start trading seeds or supply seeds to people over the time and there are a lot of or probably you can start a new dimension altogether now that you were growing microgreens and now you know the idea of how vertical farming and indoor farming works then you can scale up and then probably you can also start doing um, you know start growing products hydroponically or maybe you can use uh, you can start packaging it also you can make some food out of it or anything or and everything that will get to understand over the time when you get into the business you know you will know what will be right for you at that point of time so you may also benefit from 
uh, different government training schemes and grants and subsidies uh, that government generally uh, provides nowadays. Uh, and yes, it is only possible when you are, when you stay active in the field, when you meet the right people, when you know the right people and when right people, you know, contact you. Otherwise, it is difficult. So, um, again, the first point always gels up with this thing, you know, to, to, to get the best of the government benefits, you need to be on your toes. You need to know right people. You, you need to do right things. Rather than knowing right people, you know, you need to do the right things at the right time. Uh, and you will have to be very, very dedicated about what you are doing. And something which is very personal and, and, and which makes a person very responsible. Uh, I mean, uh, growing microgreen makes a person very responsible about nature and environment. Uh, I've been always a nature lover because my, I was always part of an adventure tourism company and, and, and I've been traveling extensively across the region and, and, and in the mainland and in and other parts as well. Uh, but after growing microgreens, I have observed that I'm I'm more closer to nature. You know, I, I've started loving the process of growing and then I make sure that even if there's some kind of weed growing it in my kitchen garden, I don't grow it. But then I had to do it because for the for the for the betterment of other uh, plants that is growing at the at my kitchen garden at the moment. But then this is how it happens. You know, you become conscious about your environment and the nature that you are living in. You know, it become it makes it, it brings your self consciousness level at a at a higher state. This is what I feel based upon my experiences. So. Essentials, what all you need to know and what all you need to have you, to become a successful agripreneur is a good vision, you know, a vision to achieve your goal that motivates you uh, to become a better person with set goals. You know, you have, you must have a focus, you know, and focus helps you to, to, to channelize your energies at, at the right places which gives you the ultimate result uh, and 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 it also helps you uh, to it also helps you to come out of frustration and failure uh, you need to be very very strategic you need to know what you are doing and when you need to uh, uh, what and when you need to do things because uh, i started this program i started growing microgreens at, <clears throat> at uh, during the low covid times only because since past two years we are having this problem of COVID. But I made a strategy to a point that, you know, at, for first six months, I need to target such kind of people. Next three months, I need to target such kind of people. Meanwhile, I need to grow this. Meanwhile, I need to reach out to all these news agencies. So, so far, whatever strategies I have used that it has worked for me. So I would also request you to based upon your area of business, your, uh, your uh, type of business, you must strategize a plan. You know, it should be a foolproof plan, which, which also must have uh, chances or, 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 or an avenue to do a little bit of, you know, changes, you know. You never know what happens. Uh, uh, circumstances can be fruitful and can be futile also. So you must have a scope for changes in your strategies. Be very optimistic about whatever you do. You know, there you will find a lot many people who will say negative things about you. You know, what are you doing? You know, who will eat seedlings? You know, people love growing and people love having big plants. You know, who will... Who you think gonna buy it? I think you're wasting your time. So these are the things people told me when I started it. But look at uh, look at Guwahati Microgreens now. It is reaching new heights every day. And, and thanks to that, now I'm in a position to talk about agripreneurship right in front of you. I being a BCom graduate, not coming from the agricultural field at all. Uh, though my father was a uh, was a passionate gardener. But he was also a banker, you know, he, he also never uh, uh, come, he never came from an agriculture background himself. But, but um, you know, microgreens, all my, optimis, all my optimism 
gave me this opportunity to present my business and present my uh, my experiences right in front of you you know so optimism is something that is very important you should know what you are doing you know and you should be uh, 100% confident about about it it can be a failure it can be a success but then you know you there should always there is always a second chance you should be optimistic about it. and another thing you need to know and you need to be is very creative you need to be very creative with your thoughts with your marketing with your strategies and you always need to think of new ideas how you can and in my case the new ideas always revolves around how i can promote new products what what benefits i need to show what kind of business segment or what kind of people i must pick to 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 show my product who i should go and approach so all these kind of and what kind of uh, what kind of uh, posters what kind of uh, message i need to promote or i need to post on instagram so these are the kind of things that need to keep in your mind and that makes you creative you, know? you may take help of others also not one person can do so many things so you can definitely take help of some professionals or your friends and family who who is good at it and uh, be adaptive to changes you know uh, we are at a position where things are changing drastically we don't know if there will be a lockdown tomorrow or or, or the whole city will will <clears throat> will open you know or 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 if there will be uh, or if there will be too many uh, what do you say if there will be too many um, curfews or whatsoever so be adaptive to the situation and uh, and be good to whatever you do you know so these are a couple of food photos which are shared by my clients uh, so to, from the left these are salads with microgreens or uh, with mustard microgreens so it can be so these are the different ways that you can use and it's not only like you know you need to use it in very special dish or 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 something which is which is very gourmet no that's not the thing you can use it in the most simplest way also look at this you know the way it has been used with meat uh, and with the mashed pumpkins or with the pumpkin soup um so this is something which is a little gourmet definitely shepherd's pie with microgreen but uh, uh, but chicken noodles is something that every one of us use and love so it can be used this way also it can be used with fruit salad also you can be used with the tortilla wraps with microgreen i suggest you guys to follow me on uh, instagram if you are using instagram or maybe even on in uh, on youtube or on on facebook as well because um, i am very much active on these platforms i and and i every day i post uh, about my product about the kind of food that can be served Uh, using microgreens or the information about the health benefits of the microgreens so that's it thank you so very much uh, my email id my contact number and my website is given i'm i'm sure by now you know it very well you can find me on instagram as gohati microgreens and so it, with the same name on facebook as well and on that note i thank each one of you for being so patient and to listening to me for all this time and thank you uh, organizers for giving me this opportunity to talk about uh, the benefits of microgreens and what thank wonders it can do for the health of people thank you so very much okay uh, rahul there are some questions in the chat box uh, can you please see the questions uh definitely hold on a minute food food learning everyone okay uh i got a question from miss lisa soto uh sir can we reuse the sprouting tray leaving the roots after harvesting the shoots 
Well, uh, you can definitely use the sprouting tray. Now that it depends upon what kind of sprouting tray you are using. If I'm using a solid sprouting tray, like something which is made up of plastic, then definitely you can. But if you are using a bowl like me, which is an Erica Palm bowl, I would strongly suggest to use a new one. But uh, once you use the sprouting tray and harvesting the shoot, you will also have to clean the substrate because the substrate will also have the roots. Though I generally don't use uh, the used cocoa peat again, but if you wish to, you can try it. But that should not be the case for commercial growing, but your personal consumption, you can reuse the cocoa peat, but make sure that you wash it and you take out the roots from there. Uh, Mr. Surat Singh have asked me, sir, apart from maintaining temperature, what are the steps which can be taken for controlling fungal growth in the germination seeds? Uh, apart from maintaining temperature, you will also be, you also need to be curious, I mean, you also need to be careful about the amount of water you are using and uh, and if, if it gets proper air, you know, proper aeration is also very important. Ensure that you are watering your uh, uh, your seeds at a level which. Oh no! Uh, am I audible? Hello, Rahul. Uh, I think the speakers got disconnected. Uh, please bear for a while. Uh, dear participants, the our speakers got uh, disconnected. He will be joining in a while. Uh, during that time, uh, you can drop some questions in the chat box. I hope that uh, everybody, uh, all the uh, participants, apart from our students from different parts of the country, I think everybody has been benefited from this very fruitful session. So uh, we all we all know now the importance of urban agriculture and how important it is in this time of crisis. We can also grow uh, such kind type of microgreens at home. Uh, I personally met this speaker in Facebook. I followed him and then I interacted with him and even I have started growing microgreens in my kitchen. So like it, it is very good for health and it is very tea also when you have as a salad dressing or any type of item like he has sown. So you also please try and during the COVID pandemic, you can uh, give this to your family. Uh, means you can take care of your parents' health and everybody's health in the fam uh, family by serving microgreens and other type of uh, this one. Uh, urban agriculture products like we uh, sowed yesterday, like the uh, like the bok choy and um, the mushrooms. So you can uh, please uh, drop some questions in the chat box.
Hello, Rahul. Can you hear me? Please unmute yourself. Yes. Can you hear me uh, now? Uh, yes. Yes, Rahul. Yes, I'm so sorry. Uh, we have some questions. Uh, no issue. No issue. No problem. Uh, you have completed the entire presentations. Uh, we have some questions from our side. Can you please hear to our question? Definitely. Uh, but I can't see it the was question. A nice question. No, uh, from I'm, our side. We are reading the question. All right. I see. Please, please nice. go ahead. It was a nice presentation, Rahul. Congratulations. And, uh, you know, when we think about the micro gains, we only thought about those profit beans, but today we have gained a lot of knowledge and uh, it is need of the art that the people are more conscious about their health and it's very helpful. Congratulations once again. And uh, we, I want to know that you have mentioned about the ideal growth of the temperature is 23 to 30 degrees Celsius, you have mentioned there in your uh, slide, but that one is specifically for a particular plant or is for all the bio, uh, microgreens? It is basically for all the microgreens because, because 30 is something you can control it till 30, you know, for almost everything okay. that I have observed. In fact, um, in, in the, in the uh, fall, winter or at, during the advent of the summers where temperature were around 29, 30 after, I have also tried growing beetroot, which is, which is impossible to be grown uh, if, it, if the temperature is beyond 31, 32. Uh, so yeah. until 30, it works yes. well. And after that, it creates problems. Okay. So an idle condition is always 23 to 25, but then be anything beyond that, we can consider it till maximum 30 and, uh, and that's it. So when I say 30, so what happens is like, you know, you, you may not need so much of AC or fans also okay. if you are staying in a comparatively mm -hmm. cooler zone and which all, which experience maximum of 30 for such places. You don't need any control environment um, uh, equipments or anything of that sort. But if you are staying in a warm place or a humid place like Guwahati or Kolkata or Chennai or Ahmedabad, you know, in such places you will definitely need AC or uh, or anything at, of uh, or, or or similar things, you know. Okay, thank you so much. Actually, the one you have used and many uh, different types of the plant you have used, different family. So some of the plants, they require a high temperature, some require a low temperature, that's why. And uh, one more thing that uh, exposure time, uh, you have mentioned that uh, when the leaves is uh, tender leaves, it's uh, turned into yellow color, right? After that, we can expose uh, to light. So that one is after how many days? or we have to wait for the tender leaves to turn into yellowish color? Or is there any specific days that we can expose to light? I mean, uh, as I already mentioned, to expose to light, you need to see if, if, if it's, no, the, the, the leaves turning yellow is not the criteria, but you need to see if, if, it, if, if the okay. seeds have germinated well and if they are half inch tall. If they are half inch tall, then definitely they, they and if okay. they are in good health, then uh, the leaves will definitely come out and they will be yellow only because they haven't seen the light till now. Okay, thank you so much. Most welcome. Rahul, and I'm very appreciate that uh, you have uh, used uh, eco-friendly packaging also. It's a very good idea. So uh, all the best Rahul for your future. Thank you. Thank you so very much. So do we have any questions from the audience? Or did I miss on something? Uh, uh, I will unmute them, just a minute. I will unmute them all, let them interact with you directly. Just click, just click in the window. Click the window. Click the window. Click the window. Click in the box. Click in the box. Yes. Yeah, dear participant, now you can directly interact with the resource person by unmuting yourself. Any participants who wants to interact with the speaker, you can speak now. Okay. Uh, Rahul, can you put on your camera?
Can you put on your video? It's because uh, most of the participants here are our students. And I want to show to them how young and energetic you are so that they get motivated from you. Can you hear me? Okay. So, Okay. So, uh, so thank you once again, Rahul, for accepting our invitation and for igniting the young minds, you know, to start up such kind of uh, good uh, initiative. Uh, and then we all know the benefits of microgreens. And then despite the uh, uh, benefits of the microgreens, you have also shown how you, you, we can consume it and how attractive it looks. And then if we start growing uh, such kind of microgreens at home and, and when you consume it and when you give to your family, uh, you know, like it will, uh, in a, it will initiate a happy hormone, like what we call the dopamine hormone in our body. Uh, last time when I first met you even I have started growing microgreens at, in my kitchen and then when I really harvest and when I consume it's very satisfying that I grew myself and I'm uh, consuming so I I hope that the participants here have been benefited and my target to uh, to ignite the young minds and also boost their uh, boost their capability has been achieved I think so uh, today is the uh, end of our webinar uh, for two days and then uh, we are now our organizing committee uh, Dr. Punabati Haisnam uh, will be giving the uh, vote of thanks uh, all the participants and the speaker please be here for some time uh, Madam Punabati I invite you to the platform uh, Thank you so much Ma uh, Madam Victoria uh, first of all, a warm and restful uh, morning uh, to our most valued today guest, uh, Mr. Rahul Sharma, to all the participants and organizing committee members. And it is my privilege uh, to propose a vote of thanks on this validatory ceremony of today's training webinar, Shifting Values and New Innovations in Urban Farming uh, During COVID-19 Pandemic. And uh, I extend a very hearty vote of thanks to our chief patrons of the valedictory session, um, uh, Dr. Anupam Mishra, uh, Honorable Vice Chancellor of Central Agriculture University, Impal, uh, for your valuable uh, contribution, moral guidance, and encouragement in all our efforts. And I uh, special uh, gratitude to our patron, uh, the Dr. Swaibam Basanta Singh, uh, Director of Instruction of Central Agriculture University. Uh, we are very thankful for your suggestion and possible steps that can be taken as our future scope and course of action. And uh, I must extend uh, my deepest sense of appreciation uh, for I would like to take, uh, take this opportunity to place on record our hearty thanks, uh, especially to all the resource persons of yesterday and today uh, who accepted our particular uh, proposal. Um, kindly name uh, Mr. Yumnam Nira Singh, uh, founder of uh, Urban, uh, uh, Urban Farms of Manipur. Dr. Sushil Sharma, uh, scientist of ICR. Uh, of uh, Manipur Center, who gave the lecture of mom cultivation, and uh, Mr. Rahul uh, Sarma, founder of Microbean uh, of Guwahati, uh, who shared their knowledge with us and to all the entire participants on the burning topic of today's uh, scenario. We yeah, are very much thankful to our uh, chairperson of the webinar, uh, Professor Bin Hazarika. Dean of College of Horticulture and Forestry. And uh, thank you, sir, for your valuable guidance, uh, timely executions, and unfailing support. Uh, my heartfelt thanks uh, to, again to the co chairman, Dr. Piraza, of your cooperation and uh, dedication for assisting the program and making it successful. And I owe special gratitude to our organizing uh, secretary, uh, Dr. Uh, C.H. Victoria Devi, 
um, for systemic plan planning, uh, untiring effort um, for dedication, uh, for managing the program smoothly and making this training program a grand success. And I also extend thanks to organizing secretary, uh, co-organizing secretary, uh, Dr. N. Somina Devi, and uh, co-coordinator, uh, Ms. Mimi um, Tayeng, uh, for involvement in very efficient manner, uh, last but not least. I thank you the technical support, uh, Ms. Monisha Melong and M uh, Mr. Take Talo for their timely support and management. And I special thanks to all the team participants uh, for sparing your time in making this training uh, webinar a grand success. Uh, so last, uh, once again, I want to say that we are all most grateful to you all. We thank you for being with us this morning. It has been a great day. Thank you so much. Thank you, Madam Punabati, for the support. And uh, thank you once again, Rahul. I hope you all the best for your future and behavior. And then I hope to see you in a bigger platform in the future. And thank you all the participants for, for, uh, for, for your participation. And I hope that the session has been very useful and fruitful to all of you. Bye-bye, have a good day. Thank you, one and all. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Uh, sorry, I was saying one last word. If anyone have any doubts or want to know more about it, feel free to contact me on Instagram. It's Guati Microgreens. That's it. I'll be more than happy to help you guys. Thank you so very much. And thanks again for, for inviting me here. Okay, thank you. Thank okay. you, Raul. Okay. Thank you so That's much. That's so kind of you. Thank you. Stop live stream for a second. Where's that?